Blind variation natural selection is, uh, of course, the source of all adaptations in the biological realm. But my view is it's also the source of all adaptations in the human and cultural realm, including all of the wonderful inventions and artifacts that we have produced. Blind variation and natural selection is the only process operating in the ontogeny and the development of the brain that produces behavior which is adaptive, whether it means you know scratching an itch or making a cup or a pen or an Apple computer. There's no design anywhere. It's all blind variation. Well, all right. Or well, that's design, design that's just not a, a top-down designer. Yeah. Yeah. You see, what, what, what I think you're doing, and, and in a way, Richard, too, is you're taking the folk ideology of design more seriously than you should. Look, the term atom means indivisible in Greek. So we should say, oh, there aren't any atoms, there aren't any atoms. <laughs> no, well, instead, we said, turns out you can divide an atom. It was, it was, and, and people buy that, you know, they, they learn to get, the initially, they thought atoms were indivisible, now we discover, oh my goodness, they're divisible in all sorts of ways. I think it's a, an easier pedagogical task to convince people that there's, design without a designer, design without an intelligent designer, than it is to convince them that there isn't are we, are, any design. Are, so our objective should be to change everybody's conceptual uh, economy while leaving the tokens that they use in everyday speech alone, changing the meanings of all the words. Because my design stance works exactly as well on biology as it works on any artifact, and Biology is, in my terms, reverse engineering. If it's reverse engineering the biosphere, if it's reverse engineering them, there's, then then the, the biologists are helping themselves to design concepts left, right, and center. And we should just say, look, there's a perfectly naturalistic, non-intelligent design sense of design that is everywhere evident in biology. And biologists, what Darwin did, this is your half full half empty. What Darwin did is showed how to naturalize the concept of design. And, and, and biologically generated design is not second-rate design. It's the only kind of design. It's, it's <laughs> the only kind of design, because I agree about that, too. It is, uh, but all the things that people marvel at when it comes to thinking about design things, the, the economy, the very things that Paley talks about. So what is politically incorrect about it? What's politically incorrect about using the word adaptation instead of design? I mean, it seems to me that using the word design enables theism. Um, that, I know this is and, this and is so the, we should just replace it. This is this is the uh, uh, but I think this is a, notice it's not a substantive debate. We we all agree about the, the the marvels of the biosphere, and we agree that there's a naturalistic explanation of it. The question is, uh, should we? Be afraid that if we use the word design, we're, we're giving a hostage to the creationists and the intelligent designers, or not? That's really the As a layman, I, I hope that you scientists um, aren't so concerned about political correctness and are more concerned <laughs> simply about clarity. Um, because I, I, I hope um, we can figure out, even as layman, if you're clear, um, how not to misconstrue what you're saying. Uh, so. I would urge that. Otherwise, I think you, you might actually muddy what you're saying, and that, that would be a shame. I want to go back to, um, sorry, uh, Richard, to, 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 to uh, Alex's response, or lack thereof, I think, uh, to Don, which is this. So at one point you said that nobody disagrees that um, everything is made of fermions. Yeah, that's true. Nobody disagrees. But that's not the discussion, is it? The discussion is, does knowledge of the fundamental laws of physics, however you want to think about the laws of physics, which is a whole different discussion, are there just empirically adequate generalizations or laws in some more strong sense of the term or whatever it is? Uh, are those the necessary and sufficient conditions to derive in principle everything else that the special sciences do? That is the question. And it seems to me that that is much more complicated than simply all agreeing that it's, everything is made of firm. We, we do agree about that one. So there we get into discussions of what, how do we conceptualize laws 
or explanations or both. Um, it does come down to what Don called or referred to something like a promissory note on the part of reductionism. That is, you know, there's this idea that, well, in principle, things are, redu are, are reducible uh, to fundamental physics. Well, what, the prin what is that principle exactly? I, I've never heard it spelled out particularly um, convincingly. And furthermore, the empirical evidence seems to me to be prima facie the opposite. That is, you know, you know if you look at the world, at the way that science looks at the world, there's plenty of, of evidence, first-hand evidence, and scientific evidence of emergent properties. Now, whether those that doesn't justify the further metaphysical conclusion that there are emergent properties in a strong sense, I agree. But it seems to me that it at least goes contrary to the opposite not, uh, metaphysical conclusion that, oh, we don't need emergent properties because clearly there are no, there's no such thing around. There is. So there is a serious issue there that science has not handled very well. In fact, uh, I believe it was a uh, physicist back in the 70s, well, Paul Anderson, I think it was Paul. Phil. Uh, Phil, thank you. Philip, yeah. Who said uh, that, it, it, that, yes, fundamental, well, fundamental physics is very interesting and is very, is very important, but in fact, it has, uh, more, it, the more fundamental physicists go that way, the less they have to say to the rest of science, including to the rest of physics. It becomes more and more irrelevant, not because it is intrinsically relevant, because, but because precisely we don't have this way of cashing out the idea that we can go and reduce everything down to the uh, ultimate law of everything. 